if you ask somebody what a UFO field is, generally, this is what comes to mind. So when I tell them it actually looks more like this, they get completely confused. They don't understand why there's a field inside the UFO and also why this field continues to build. The simple answer is the outside and the inside are built with two totally different forms of energy. To better understand this, let's just go back to the basics. This is a simple toroidal structure. And if I ask you to build a field around it, this is the most common answer that you would give. A toroid builds magnetic field lines that go around it in one direction. The next step would look like this. You add wire to the toroid. Then it builds a field based on the wire and where it's placed. The problem is a toroid or a toroid with wire around it does not build a field that looks anything like this. So let's just start over. Is a toroid really what you want at the center of your UFO? And the answer simply is no. So if it's no, what do we need to put there instead? We need to build a flow pattern into the coil. And there's no better way to build a flow pattern than to use sacred geometry. So we start with simple shapes that we know that we can put into a toroidal fashion. Then we start to make them more complex. Each time that we make a shape, we put it into a wire form. Then we test it and we check the flow pattern. We see which ones match and which ones don't. For every new pattern we try, there's always a different outcome. How you connect them and how each one flows matters. We will start to see effects in everything that we do. Sometimes the energy flow can rotate a neodymium sphere magnet in circles. At this stage, we start to push it. We start to imagine this as a 3D shape. Then we start winding coils to build it into a 3D shape. We're looking for a flow. We're looking for energy to move from one point to the other. And what happens when one thing crosses another? And can we still rotate the neodymium magnet in it? The answer is yes. The question then becomes, can we add multiple magnetic fields inside of this coil in order to get something different to happen? This journey is not going to be an easy one. It's not going to come overnight. It's going to take a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of practice to get it right. Every single coil you build is different. Every single one has a different outcome. Every one of them creates a different field geometry. It's going to be important to log every single test as you do them so that you can refer back to the notes of the video footage that you took of each single test. This is not an easy task. It will take a lot of time. Please be patient. But the understanding at the end will be completely worth it. But once we have our field coil and we start to understand what it does, what else do we need to put into this device to get us our field flow? Because just this coil as it sits is not going to do it without adding certain effects to it. As we look back at our UFO structure and how the fields are built, we also have to realize we need different types of energy. We're going to need a magnetic field, and we're also going to need a static field. Let's start with the magnetic field. We can use a Tesla coil in order to create a magnetic field on the outside. However, the standard Tesla coil has a weak field that comes out of it. We need to strengthen that or thicken the field. The only way to do that is to rotate the Tesla coil. Now, at this point, I know what you're thinking. We could just put a wire on top of our Tesla coil, spin it. Okay, guys, we're going to pause it right there. 
Oh, Joe just disappeared. We got a special guest in today. We got Joe in here with me, and uh, we are live. So when he pops back in, uh, we'll talk to him. He, oh, there he comes. Joe, you popped out for a second. There you are. How you doing, man? We're talking a little bit of UFO theory, a little bit of coil theory. What are your thoughts so far? Uh, I mean, first off, I love the video that you put out. Um, I mean, you and I had talked about, uh, you know, some of these things, uh, you know, on our on, on the side and then uh, also on our last chat. And even though I had a pretty good understanding having those visuals, you know, um, that really, uh, for me, at least elevated it, made it, you know, way more digestible. Yeah. And um, especially love the uh, part that you were talking about, um, you know, the sacred geometry. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think that that's uh, one of those critical um, components here. Uh, what immediately came to mind for me was, um, you know, the the esoteric saying of like squaring the circle. You yeah. know, that's, yeah. that's kind of what you're trying to do, square the circle. So yeah. pretty neat. Well, that's if you've ever seen Gerald's coil, it's doing the same thing. He's putting different geometries into it along with this beautiful, like, I want to call it a star pattern, but I don't know if you can exactly qualify it as that. It's like multiple stars on top of each other, if you know what I mean. And yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, it produces different things as you make each one of those patterns an individual coil. It changes how each thing works. Right. And that that's, um, first of all, I mean, it's mind blowing, but it also does make sense, you know, because it's not only the direction of the flow, but the interactions um, based on the, the pattern itself, you know, um, exactly. which directly ties into what we were talking about the last time, uh, you know, about the, it, it's not so much, um, you know, whatever one component's doing, it's the interaction between the components that um, you know, have, have the ultimate measurable outcome. Yeah, so let me answer this question right here. Okay, classical uh, times two, those fields cancel each other. The, so here's the thing. We're creating a static field. So that's one field. Then we're creating a Tesla coil field. Because they're both DC, they can interact with each other. However, because they're created completely differently in how they work, they will never cancel each other. They can overlap. So you can get the static field to go outside the Tesla coil field if you don't make the Tesla coil field strong enough. So they don't cancel each other out, but the whole key to this whole thing is rotation. If you don't have some form of rotation, you can't thicken any field and you won't get the static to push off fast enough. It'll create a static, but it'll take forever to build. You want to build it right away. So you need it to rotate to throw it out. So. Hopefully that answers your question there. <laughs> so, okay, Joe, you ready for a little more of the video? Yeah, sure. All right, let's go. Ion wind will spin it around, and we'll get a rotating Tesla coil. However, that's not a rotating Tesla coil at all. That's usage of the Tesla coil that expels energy out, but doesn't give us what we want. We physically need to turn the Tesla coil. In a standard Tesla coil, just sitting on your table, will produce energy that looks like this. You get the energy flow pattern that goes around in a circle. However, in the center, you will also get the Tesla coil ring. It is a very distinct looking sine wave. You will see it build up and disperse energy. That's where the energy comes from. Okay, do you guys see that right there in the center? That wave right there, that's an unmistakable Tesla coil ring right there. That's the exact ring sign that it makes right there. It's small, builds out, and then goes down to the outside edge and then explodes out. That's what it's doing right there. Now, this the diagram didn't, or excuse me, this video didn't show you exactly the perfect one, but it's close enough where you can start to recognize it. So I just wanted to make that distinction here so that everybody understands what we're trying to do. Now, the energy being produced, the last one when you see the Tesla coil and the thing on the top and it spins, the reason you never wanna do that is because you want the energy to build. 
if you use the energy as ion wind, it never builds. That's a problem. You never want that Tesla coil hot. So the explosiveness that comes out of the Tesla coil, you don't want. The resonance in the Tesla coil is exactly what you want. That's what creates your field. If you start to use that energy, it's wasted. And that will explode the whole thing and make you start all over. So you don't want that energy wasted. Now, you're going to be able to pull energy from this, but you're going to do it out of the center spot and you're going to pull it directly out of the cold zone. So a cold energy circuit is what you want to use to pull the energy out or simple wire down the center of your Tesla coil will pull the energy out at cold energy. What do you think, Joe? I I think that's totally understandable. And, um, you know, as far as like, uh, you know, the, 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 the center point of it all, um, you know, that, that we were kind of talking about that zero point that it creates, um, yeah. you know, that's, that's kind of critical to that static field. Um, that that's the secondary result of, um, you know, the, this field pattern. Exactly. All right, let's play a little more. It accumulates in the coil and then it bursts out the top. As you can see in this, we see the ring right in the center. The Tesla coil doesn't put out necessarily lines of energy. It puts out a field bubble. However, in order to thicken that bubble and put it around our UFO, we have to rotate it. You have to continuously start new field lines every time that it goes around. Therefore, it'll make the whole thing thicker. That's the only way to get a proper bubble around our UFO. Besides the field bubble, a Tesla coil provides a longitudinal wave. This is going to give us direction in our UFO. It's going to say whether we go up or we go down. As many of you have already figured out, a regular Tesla coil configuration is not going to do that. We are going to have to build a bipolar Tesla coil. We also need to change the orientation that a bipolar Tesla coil is normally in. Again, we're looking for the field energy to go north and south. That now, I just want to stop it right there so everybody understands this. When you turn the Tesla coil on its side, it will create a transverse wave. If you do not flip that wave, you cannot get the longitudinal wave out of it. It has to be straight up and down. So in my gravity flyer project, I have the center plate. When it goes into the center plate, it's creating the transverse wave. I have to pop the piezoelectric disc in order to get it to go to the longitudinal again. So it's, it's a simple understanding of where the energy flows at based on what you're doing and how it's laid out. But it, the orientation is going to matter. Now, I, I have a question about that. Um, with that center plate on your on your flyer, um, does that, that that appears to be just like um, a, a circular plate itself, right? Like it's yeah. it's the, right now. If you were the, it, I had mentioned this to you kind of on the side, but it, if there was uh, to be a hollow in the middle of it, are you still going to be able to achieve a same effect? Like, no. no. Okay, so, so that has to be flat like that. So hold on. There's two ways to look at this. And the first way is if you have the center plate in it, right, you're going to get a field generator. So it's going to generate a field on the disc above it and the field on the disc below it. And it's going mm -hmm. to generate a field based on the center plate. Okay? okay. So if you put the center plate to a Tesla coil, it's going to hold in the field of the top and bottom fields, you know what I mean, of the uh, static electricity. Now, can it be can it be dished in the center? Well, see, hold on. We'll, 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 I'm going to finish answering your question before we get on to that. Sorry. If I put a piece of plastic in the center instead of a piece of metal, what happens? Then the plastic deflects the static electricity to make it go around like this, right? But then it charges up and down like a capacitor. Mm -hmm. So you're now, it's trying to go to there. It gets deflected and moved around. So deflected and moved around and goes up. So it looks like an onion on the top and onion on the bottom. So there's two different ways to build this in order to get the fields. But in the classical configuration that we think the metal plates in the center, it's a field generator. When you put 
the capacitor type with the plastic in the center, then you get the uh, different effect. You, you get a different lifting effect, which is more of a pure lift than the first one is. The first one's more like a, a field generator. Okay, your set, what was your question again? I mean, the question, I mean, it kind of skips forward in the video as far as that is, is concerned, but it's more about um, the, you know, stability and controllability, you know, functionality that would ultimately come about, you know, in overcoming that obstacle. Um, you know, uh, as you had said that the effects are much greater, generally, the closer that the, the coil is to the center plate. However, there is only so close that you could come to the center plate while still maintaining optimal effect, um, you know, and not arcing and that sort of thing. So, um, you know, where my mind went on that was, um, you know, uh, again, it's skipping forward a little bit, but like a, a gyroscopic type of um, mounting, you know, to the frame where you could bring the uh, coil down closer you know within the center plate you know and then that could modulate in the center well you know controlling the effect and stabilizing you know especially since there's rotation involved you know with the rotation you're going to be dealing with um you know gyroscopic torque stabilization so think of it like a bubble okay just like mm -hmm. a balloon right and on the outside of the balloon, I'm going to put just a simple C-shaped or whatever uh, core. And I'm going to wrap it right here, right? That's it. C-shaped core. Okay. Yeah. Now, all that's going to do is it's going to act as a robber. So it's going to try to pull that bubble. So it's like sucking in a balloon in your mouth, right? You suck it in, and that little piece of that bubble's in your mouth now, right? Well, that's kind of the same effect. It's pulling it to that one side. So if you put those all around the craft, right, in the center, now mm -hmm. you can pull it right and left. So if you want to go right, you pull the right one. You pull left, you go that left. That makes sense. So you can right. get Field directionality. Control. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, again, the Tesla coil will give you your up and down motion. So the rotation, you can spin it faster, and then you're going to start to get an extra effect because now, because the center itself on this particular thing, not the gravity flyer, but on this, you're going to get that hole in the center. So it's going to pull in all the extra energy up in the atmosphere. So you're going to be able to really crank this thing up and go as fast as you want. You know what I mean? Because you're getting extra energy put in. Mm -hmm. But that's that's a later part in the video. I wanted to address it then. But hopefully yeah. that answered pretty much your question. It, no, it does. And, I'm, you know, it's it's like the, the more than one way to skin a cap, but which is best <laughs> sort of yeah. situation. You know, and that that definitely makes more sense. You know, the the, the less variables, the less failure. So yes, exactly. Okay, here we go. And yes, by the way, uh, it's just gyroscopic stabilizer. Yes, so you have to start thinking about this. The weight is going to be in the center of the craft, especially if we're adding C-shaped capacitors like the uh, um, OTC X one the Odyssey car, and it has those, the weight's going to be in the center. So it's going to create a gyroscopic effect. So it will flow, you know what I mean? And stay right there. It won't go, you know, cattywampus on you. It's going to stay like this. It's like simulated gyroscopic is kind of what it is. It's modulated, simulated, same yeah. effect. The, the, the weight's going to be in the center, so it's going to stay in the center. That's basically the way I see it. So, and the magnet, you know, the magnetism is going to be strongest there as well, no matter what you do. So, okay, let's go on a little bit. That means it has to stand straight up with the coil in the center. Now that we have a better understanding of how the outside magnetic field built, now we need to look back at the static inside field that needs to be built as well. This is an ion thruster. As you can see the purple in it, it's making ion wind. The problem here is that it's using the energy. The energy is being transferred. Okay, I have to make this a very clear point. You do not want ion wind. Zero ion wind. This thing has to build static, okay? 
So the point before you see the purple, even at night, you have to have it in static form. So you're going to create a charge state, not a state where it uses the energy. You never want to use this energy. You want it to build. So, so what I what I mean by that is you get the center right of your UFO like this. You want that to build energy, and you never want it to stop. So every time an energy comes out of your center coil, it goes right. But you still have the 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 fuel coming in basically. So you still start creating more and another one and another one and another one. You haven't taken your foot off the gas yet. So you're still creating more every time it goes around. It's not one field created around and you're done. No, it's start, 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 start. It's continual doing because it's breaking off. It's breaking off into static electricity. So it's filling a room. It's filling that void inside your craft. So you're compressing it as well. So if you don't do that, you're using the energy before you start, and that is a big no-no. It's an automatic fail. To get complete oh, is to sorry. really line the I energy. skipped it. You need to lower the amperage. You can see the purple in it, the energy. The energy is being transferred into light. It's also being transferred into ions. Therefore, the energy is being used in this process. We need to lower the amperage on this energy in order for it to become static energy. If you do not do this and you do not understand the relationship between frequency and heat and frequency and amperage and voltage and frequency, this is going to be a very hard task to pull off. If you do understand the relationship, then changing this plasma into a static electricity should be the easiest thing in the world to do. Now. Okay, Joe. Do you understand how to switch it? Um, I, I think this part's a little difficult for me to, to follow. I mean, I, I understand the interaction and, you know, the um, the 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 static field with the plasma but it may be not how to switch it okay so if you take your circuit that you build right and you want to add more frequency what inevitably happens is the voltage will go up and the amps will go down so you're going to create less heat and it's going to be more of a flow just mm -hmm. makes sense right okay, it, it does yeah yeah I have a lot of commentary on that, but I think we should get through the video um, okay. because, uh, you know, like we started talking about last time, I kind of see things like as um, as a very unified whole, you know, and there's a lot of um, parallel to like, um, you know, bent off zero point and, uh, you know, that that I could actually bring up that, that might be fascinating and actually maybe help, you know. No, you got it. We'll too. get into that. So yeah, yeah, just... for sure. Let me just finish so everybody understands. If yeah. I bring the voltage too high where I have less than milliamps, I get a static field. I'll also get a charged state. As soon as you put it on paper, the paper sucks to the table. Okay. That's the way a charged state works. Okay. It's like static claim. Now, if I raise up the amps, I bring up the heat level, which brings down the frequency. So it's a flow. It always flows and it'll always change based on heat level and frequency. As soon as you change those two factors, you change your electricity. And I don't care how you build it, that's what happens. And it'll do it every single time, on cue, every time. So, it's a big flow of energy and how you can work it out is how you're gonna get to the next level. If you can't, if you can't understand that part, building static electricity is gonna be hit and miss for you. You're not gonna understand it, you're gonna build something that has energy coming out that's wasted without the static electricity effect, and you'll never fill up the bubble. So, because you'll keep continuously using the energy. So let's go on to the next part of the video because I, I really want to hear what Joe has to say on some of this. It's imperative that it comes out as static electricity. If it comes out as ion wind, you are using the very energy you need to be produced in the bubble and wasting it. 
it will nullify the field you're trying to create. As you take a look at this picture, you're starting to understand how the fields are being built and why. On the outside, we see our Tesla coil field. It's magnetic. It's going to hold in the static field. The static field in this is shown in purple. We can now see the outside field holding in the inside field. We can also see the flow of the Tesla coil as it wraps around and goes back into the center. What you also notice is the static field does the exact same thing. What does that create in the center? It creates an artificial zero point, a point in which the energy is now compressed and is now higher on the inside than the outside field. Why? Why do we have compression there? It all has to go through the center of that toroid shape we're trying to build. One of the most common misconceptions is when you're talking about compression in the center, people go back to this picture right here. They continuously think that we're building a toroid with the magnetic fields only in compression. However, the actual answer is much different than that. We are using... Okay, Joe. We're into the compression now. We're into the My favorite point. part. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, I mean, I actually pulled up on one of uh, the books that I have just some um, Celtic knots and symmetries. Um, I always forget where my camera is. You know, and all of these ancient symbols, you know, used throughout time they they all express zero points you know if if you look at the patterns you know they're all um multi-rotational fields that converge um you know at the zero um, like right there you know or right in the center and that's where the compression all comes in you know and um and what i find to be interesting is like uh you know the ancient Celts and uh, Druids and uh, stuff like that, you know, they, <laughs> the, you know, mythical um, lore around them was that of like magicians and ones that could exploit power, energy and nature, you know, to at their will. And that's their symbolism, you know, super fascinating. Um, you know, when you have those toroids coming in on each other, I mean, it makes sense. You know, you have something that's expanded coming in and bottlenecking, you know, and then re-expanding, you know, and it's at that, you know, it, it's it's one of those situations where if you zoom in, that point just indefinitely gets smaller and smaller and smaller, you know, um, and and at the dead center of whatever that is, is that greatest compression at that dead center, you know. Oh. Well, one of the things, just so, so you know, when you trap static electricity, it doesn't have an option. It has to go with the flow. So right. I, the more you create, the more that flows into the center again. So mm -hmm. a, as, as you're doing this, you're amplifying it because you're only pushing out so much, but you're pushing out so much every second or every you know half second or whatever it is. And then that also has to be compressed in the center because it has to go with the flow. So, but all the ancient ones, by the way, it's just the difference in how you build the coil. We're just talking general build a coil, you know, on, on this. We're not talking specifically how to wind it. When you get into that, it's going to start to create those shapes. It's going to start right. to create different things. And they're all used for something different. Now, I, I did have kind of like a curiosity that's erupted out of all of this is that once you have this and it's not hooked up to anything external, when, once it's an internal um, object, you know, how does this energy flow and, um, you know, consumption of the energy and bringing in of the energy and compression of it, how does that work when you can't ground the system because you need to create the cold energy side you have to steal right. the energy out in order to lessen it 
right? Makes sense? Putting the wire yeah, but down. Where, where does it get put to? Just the fields? It gets dispersed through entropy through the field generation? More yeah, or less, so it's, never, it's it's not finding ground as as a, a as a field. It's just being dispersed and diffused. So there's two ways you got to look at it. Either you can release some of the static field, or you can you know because you still still got to make the stuff, no matter how you do it. So either you can release it, or the core down the center does it naturally. You know what I mean? So. Doesn't I don't know which one is going to bleed on you, but one of them will. You know what I mean? It's gonna right. It's got to go somewhere. It's, yeah, you it's know. gonna eventually do it, and you just got to find it. Every time we talk about UFOs, everybody always talks about the static in the air, and there's probably a portion of that that goes on the outside of the field as well. That's getting dispersed. I know that you could take the wire, put it down the center, and steal all the energy you want. Now, the thing is. Here's the difference. You're stealing it. You're not exploding it. Because you're not exploding it, you're not using it. You're not creating ion wind. You're not creating these other effects, right? So that, that would use it. We don't want to use it. We want to steal it. So creating that wire down, it just takes it away from there and pulls it out. If you ever see the cold side of an energy circuit, the hot side stays on one side and is constant. The cold side pulls it from it and stays on the other side and creates the flow. So that's the exact system you want to do, cold energy. You're pulling it straight from the center and you can use it at any now, time. Now, just sparked something for me that, like, um, I don't want to say, like, I fully understood what th it was, but I see a relation here. Um, you know, I had uh, watched um, a, a lecture where they were um, saying that um, in some of these uh, collider experiments that they were doing, you know, that they more or less found, like, an aether membrane you know and that's where the i think i think they were like bosons would come from right you know and the, basically if you stimulate this um membrane then every so often and randomly it will produce bosons out of it right but the thing is is that they were borrowed the, you couldn't actually steal them you could capture them but they would dissipate so I think what they were saying with that, and it relates directly to this because, you know, that you, you could name it whatever you want, you know, and, uh, you know, I think at the end of the day, when you're trying to draw the energy and steal it, you know, or take it or use it or whatever, you know, we're still talking about the same thing, you know, having that constant flow of that unlimited extreme amount of energy. Maybe the answer is that it doesn't have to diffuse out because if it's not stolen, if it's borrowed like that source had suggested, then you could use it as it flows, but it's ultimately going to immediately go back to where it came from, you know, um, after whatever duration, you know, and I don't think that they could really put their finger on it. And again, that science was a little bit above my head and it's all these people talking about the CERN experiments and stuff. And, you know, even the transit, they're not trying to explain it at the fundamental levels. They're just kind of going into the, the, the deep science of it. But that was my takeaway was that it can actually be stolen. It can be borrowed. It can be stored and used, but at some point, like it leads to fluctuations because I don't think that they were able to predict, um, you know, the, um, the breakdown of of when you know at what rate any of these particular particles were breaking down you know and um what's it's we're not even talking about electrons but rather fractions of them fractions of an electron gotcha i i i think there's yeah. a difference in what they're doing and what we're doing in these experiments yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, this, this is just yeah. a coil this that we're not colliding stuff we're not you know i mean it's no. a total different but it's taking from from the same place. Yeah, they're taking it to explode them into each other. We're never trying to do that. We're, we're, I'm not talking we're, about. I'm not talking about the what they're colliding. I'm talking about the result of the collision. Right, but that's still using the energy to make an explosion. You see yeah, what I'm saying? we're not trying I, okay. to do that. I could see that. So we're just right. pulling the energy, and then we can put it to the side. Where, you know what I mean? We can run a motor, we can run our ship, whatever, you know, features are inside. We can operate those based on that energy. You know what I mean? But, okay. we are, but we're not 
It's like putting it to a transformer. Once you put it to the transformer, it immediately jumps, and then the back compression has gone. So if you ever notice, they put a transformer in right before a full bridge rectifier. There's a reason for that because it'll push back on it, and it can't push okay. the field back up. It continues to have to flow one way. It's like a, it's like an, a giant diode in a way when they okay. put in that transformer, even if it's the same to the same. You know what I mean? So there's so there's no negative loss of that energy flow just by yeah. virtue of its existence. It's it's it's, it's an uh, an up and up thing. Then it ultimately is dispersed. Yeah, and then you okay. will have loss of energy as the as the craft flows as it goes. It's inevitable. Right. You know what I mean? Well, it's being used. Yeah, because air is going to capture alongside of it and capture some of the energy with it. You know what I mean? Okay. If you're in space, there's something that's going to combine with it. You know what I mean? And take it away. You know what I mean? Right. There, there is going to be bonding going on. So you have to be cognizant of that. Okay. What, what's the what's the um, effect of that bonding? That it uses it. It takes it out of the system. So okay. as, soon as, it, as soon as it bonds with it and creates something, it's gone. You can only okay. use it. So you're, you're basically at a zero point creating an artificial ether in the center. That's what mm -hmm. you're doing at the very the very crux of it. That's it right there. Okay. You're just, you're creating that. So just like an ether, it's going to create certain things. You know what I mean? Whether it be combining molecules into water or combining into mist, whatever it is they're combining into, you're still going to pull that energy out. Okay. So there's always going to be loss. There's nothing you would, that's why the static electricity has to continue to flow or else the system would be dead in a few minutes. Once it got up in the air, you you'd clog it and it'd be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. Okay. We'll continue to go a little bit. Oh, sorry. One field then create another field, then create another field. It's continuous. If you look at the field, it looks like a bubble, but it's actually not. It's a continuously new field that's being created all the time. That happens in the outside field bubble by the Tesla coil, but it also happens to the static electricity in the center. Static electricity is airborne. Therefore, it propagates in the air. It does not stay as a field around a coil. You are building energy in layers, continuously flowing out of your coil setup. As we go back to our UFO again, we can... Okay, real quick, I just wanted to answer a rod and coil question. Uh, somebody asked about it. It will, when you put more energy into it, create the ion wind. Just so you know. If you do not put it in some kind of a sealer, to, to stop that, it's going to continue to do it. Uh, ben himself, uh, Ben's in the chat, he's created ion wind out of his. Now, it's the same thing with Gerald's coil. So you have to watch it because the coil wires are so close. You cannot have an anode and a cathode connect because that will create ion wind. They have to be where they cannot connect to each other. They have to be away from each other. So resin would be one of the things that you would put in there in order to stop it. But as Gerald noticed when he hid to his coil, it still created plasma bubbles in the resin on the coils. So we'd have to come up with another material that's stronger than that. But just to get it running, resin would work great. But if you don't do it, you're going to have a problem when you start running high voltage through it. Whether it be a rodden coil or it be another coil, a star coil, whatever you want to say, you'll have problems with it because the wires are so close together. So anyway, just wanted to say that. You can see the lines never stop. They never stop producing a new field. They also never stop going back into the center. For every new field that's created, the center increases in energy. That's why the zero point has a lot more energy than any one field on the outside. Now that we understand how a lot of this stuff is starting to come together, understand this. It's only simple lift that we're getting out of this. We have not put in any feature for directionality at all. Only the direction that goes up and down. So, there's a lot more stuff to learn. Where do we start? You're going to have to go back to the geometry. Sacred geometry always tells you the answer. 
and it always propagates into building coils that put all of it into one. You're going to have to decide on your own. Do you build the Tesla coil separate from the coil? Do you build the coil into the Tesla coil? Are you going to build something that works correctly with one field to the next without overlapping and ruining that field? Does it matter which one you turn on at which time? All of those are answers you're going to have to give yourself as you do the test and you start to make this work. I can tell you one thing. We are getting there. But the problem is not everybody understands it yet or even how we get to this point. That's why I'm making this video so that we can all understand exactly what we're looking at so that we know how to evaluate it. Once we do that, we can move forward to the next part of our UFO. I hope this helped everybody out there. I hope all right, I'm going to move that from the screen. All right, Joe, what do you think? I mean, again, I, I love that you took the time to put that together. I think that it consolidates, you know, so many discussions that have already happened, you know, into, um, you know, one very definitive place, you know, in, in, in a way that's, um, you know, frankly, even if you didn't really know anything too much about any of this, I think that, you know, with a basic understanding of how coils work and then the fields that are put out that you can watch something like that and get what it's trying to achieve, you know, so stand up job on that, which I would expect nothing less from you, man. Everything you do is pretty, pretty sweet. Um, you know, um, and then, uh, you know, having watched, uh, in, and taken a little bit of time in, uh, you know, looking at uh, some of the other uh, players in this, you know, and, and what they're up to, um, Gerald and his coils, like you said, I mean, really impressive work with that. Um, you know, the intricacy uh, of that, the complexity is just, you know, mind bending, you know, to uh, kind of brings it back to what we were talking about the other day about being able to visualize the effect, yes. you know of what what's actually being produced out of something that complex because you know <laughs> i can only imagine the mind that could sit there and look at all those different leads and then sit there and form a shape around it and then on top of that shape then put it into context of time and motion with the flow of how it's all interacting and the effects of it I mean, again, you know, brilliant people out there, but I, I think that being able to find a way to properly visualize that um, in the dimensionality, you know, that that's appropriate for, you know, I think that that would be the next step in making a, a wider understanding for people, you know, when, when dealing with that complexity of coils, you know? Yeah, um, usually what we get is somebody just points out a toroid, and they continuously tell me there's just a little ring around each part of the toroid as you go. And that's what I always get. And people aren't understanding the flow. That's why I kind of put this together. I wanted to show flow. I wanted to show them how things flow into one another, how they're being built, you know, along with each other and how they work. Some of these things, man, you just have to see them to understand them. Like I build fields all the time out of my gravity flyer that people just don't understand. Like, they tell mm -hmm. me they understand them, but they don't understand a rotating testicle because they don't ever see it. See, that's the thing. You could Well, what you're trying to achieve with that, just to kind of put it into, like, an analogy, maybe, if you think about, like, surface tension of water, you know, and how you could ride a bead of water yeah. on top of the surface of the water, you know, when you're dealing with some, uh, you know, interacting fields, that's sort of optimal you know, is that surface tension type yeah. of flow. So when they when they come into each other, you know, it's not that they're not interacting, but realistically, you want them to ride with each other and yeah. work, and not be fighting one another and not be intermingling all too much, but rather just kind of working off of each other, you know, being that's optimal. One, that's one of the things, too. People keep thinking if you put it in there, then they cancel each other out. Like the energy that goes into the center, they keep thinking you cancel it out. But the thing is, it doesn't. It builds. It just keeps yeah. compressing. It keeps compressing until you have this massive amount of energy that stays in there. And that's right. one of the common misconceptions of this because they keep thinking magnetic coils. 
they don't put it into the fact that we're doing static electricity. It never, never really crosses their mind. And by the way, right here, I just want to answer this question. When we mm -hmm. do Gerald's coil, okay, it's going to become very apparent what I'm talking about. That's why I'm doing this before he does his layout on his coil. Because every single one of the factors I talked about are in that coil. That's what makes it so special. Every test that he does, everything that he does, that big coil he's got, complete geometry, completely building fields. The only thing is, is does he have enough Tesla coil in there to get that longitudinal wave? Because he's creating two coils that actually interact just like a Tesla coil. One resonates the other, and then you get a basically a third thing. So if the inside matches the outside, what you're going to get in a Tesla coil is the actual frequency will drop. And that's exactly what he gets in his center. So it kind of, is there enough of each one in there? And that's what we got to find out. But does it create all the special effects? Absolutely, it does. Right. That's not a zero point. That's an offset, which is a different effect entirely. No, no, he, he's got a zero point in the thing. This is zero point two? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and it's more than you would think. I, I don't want to give away, you know, what he's going to do, but. I'll, I'll just say it's probably maybe a hundred times more than you ever thought it would be. It's That's the awesome. amount of energy in the center than you would think. So there's all kind of implications for that. But right now we're just keeping it in the context of uh, UFO theory. So well, yeah, just, if, if, <laughs> if I can, before, before we get too far in, cause it's UFO theory, but it's also that one thing that came to mind about that 0.2. Cause I, I mean, it's my opinion again, says it right next to my name community idiot <laughs> you know, it's um you know i think that that zero point is probably one of the most i mean it's critical to the system first off i mean you know that that's needless to say it's the critical factor um you know and uh, i think that the, a lot of the zero the concepts around the zero point of uh, being all in the same i think that they access the same energies when I was looking at, um, and I brought it up the other day, but like uh, Bentoff, you know, when he was talking about consciousness, you know, um, and then he's talking about, you know, brain brainwave frequency. You know, he talks about high frequency, low amplitude, you know, and it's funny, before I ever read his book, that when I was trying to figure all this out on my own, that was the one thing that came to mind, too, is this high frequency, low amplitude, and why? Well, the, the reason of why is that that zero point, it really only exists fra for fractions at any given time based on the, the, the frequency that's generated. Um, the more the frequent it is and the lower it has on travel, the longer that zero point exists, you know, in hours time space like uh, objectively for us it may seem like it's just there once it's there because it's a you know the, the the results of it are but it's kind of just blinking in and out of existence is you know uh the reality of it i think so that that's where that low that high um high frequency low amplitude you know can be exploited you know well I think the field gets bigger. And, and the reason I say that is it, not so much bigger. It just stays about the same size once it's built. The thing is, if you take out the rotation on the earth, it would cancel out every field we have. It would be zero. Mm -hmm. It'd be absolutely be zero. zero. It'd be nothing. It, without that rotation, it works on so many different levels. That's what mm -hmm. people have to understand. It's, it's not just one thing. It's everything. And, that's why people don't understand it based on a regular Tesla coil and a rotating Tesla coil because they function different. You know what I mean? In the absence, in the actual absence of all the forces, there is no, like, it's not suspended, you know, matter or anything like that. It would just fall apart. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it, boils down to. it would, it would disappear and it would disappear into nothingness because there's nothing to hold it all together the entropy would kick in and then it wouldn't matter because there's nothing, no force left to consolidate any of it. So then it would just cease to exist. That's it's right. fascinating. And that but, is that, that is that center point though. 
Which yeah. is where it's scary, sort of. <laughs> but but that's perfect for UFO building because you want something that when you park it, it ain't going to try to ride off on you. You know what I mean? <laughs> Absolutely. Sure. And it's controllable, which is even better. <laughs> yeah, because you could control the amount of energy going in there based on how much of each field you build. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's also cool as well because if you want to up it up, you know what I mean? Just throw some more energy into it from your storage. And, man, you're you're starting to go. So that's what's interesting. When when you talk uh, Otis D. Carr, he always tells you it's over unity when it's in the air, but not on the ground. And that's because the energy also accumulates in our atmosphere and blows right through the center of this thing. So his, his whole machine was a frequency device. I don't think many people realize that, but it is. So well, what is it? What, what isn't really a, a, at its most simplest you know uh functionality a uh, frequency device i mean everything yeah everything has frequency in it it doesn't matter what you do it, or else it doesn't exist that's kind yeah. of the thing i mean everything's got to create some form of wave or else it's nothing and mm -hmm. when they talk about dark matter out there well i guess that's where no frequency is then there would be nothing that would make all the understanding in the world but i don't know if there's even matter there because it would just be a dark point in space. You know what I mean? Because you can't create matter without the frequency. No matter what it is. Yeah, that, and that's what's weird about, you know, um, the whole the whole time dilation situation that we were discussing the last time because, you know, frequency is dependent on time because without time, there's no measure of frequency. Yeah. You know? So it's they, they go hand in hand more than space time. It's more like frequency time. You know what I mean? Frequency mm -hmm. equals one over time. That's the way it's said. That's what it is. You know what I mean? It's not space time. That that would be wrong in the way you see it. You know what I mean? I, and I know they all Einstein everything whatever. Okay, I'm telling you right now, it's frequency equals one over time. And let me bring up that that picture real quick because I want to show you this. So I'll add it back. When we look at this right here, okay, see if my cursor can go, oh, my cursor can't. Okay, when we look at this right here, there is a spot. So the static electricity is in the center, right? Let me, let me see if I can't pull a better picture so you can see it. Okay, that one. You see the static electricity in the center, right? The truth is the static electricity is right close to the actual outside of the Tesla field or the inside, excuse me, the inside of the Tesla field. In the inside. So you take that spacecraft right there, right? And you're basically creating pockets in the center, not, not the center hole, okay? Not the little field that goes around it like this. But then when you get into this, it creates a pocket, okay? Then it goes out here. Static is pushed out here for because of rotation. Then the Tesla coil field's right here. So what you're actually getting is a spot in there, a cavity, okay? That's right in those two areas, right on both sides. And that's where time dilation happens. That That's kind of the, the big thing about it. You're going to find that that's where it is. It's not in the top part, not in the bottom, not in the sides. It's right there. It's kind of like... Uh, Oh, what's that field they put outside the Earth that they always talk about? Uh, I can't even think of the name right now. There's something. Uh, oh, now I'm, I'm drawing a big blank. Anyway, it's a big. Well, there's a couple field. of fields outside the Earth. I mean, that's, oh. that's why I was silent on that. <laughs> Sorry, it's it's the one they always talk about, the where they say the moon landing can't happen because of this field. Right, right, yeah, it's a big radiation field, the gamma radiation that surrounds us. Yeah, so basically what you find is you have the core of the Earth that has the ether. You have the surface of the Earth that has nothing. It's an open air space. Then you have the outside of the Earth and the fields start. That's the same yeah. thing here. We're not building anything different. We're just mimicking nature. And that's exactly what nature shows us in a planet, that that's what it does. So right. we're, we're in the habitable zone. If I'm creating a UFO, I'm creating a habitable zone right there. Well, the Earth is a UFO. 
<laughs> you know, like if you want to look at it macro. I mean, when when I had asked you that arbitrary question about what's the gravity at or the center of Earth, and the answer is, well, I don't think there is any gravity at the center of Earth. Well, that just means that everything, you know, would fall apart. <laughs> you know, like it would it, it would have nothing to stick to at that point. You know, so it's got to work against. It's it's like the sun. You know, they say that the fusion of the sun you know, it's a, it's a pulsing thing, well, you know, it's a pulsation. I don't think there's and, any gravity at the zero point. I think the first field bubble that comes around it has all of it. And that's what yeah. it pulls to it, not necessarily the zero point itself, but right outside the zero point, the field first field that it creates in rotation, just like a rotating magnet, right? That first field that it creates is the strongest. That's exactly where all the gravity is. You know what I mean? That's your main source. And then so it it's absolutely the strongest before it's none. Yes. It's it's literally a up and spike down. That's it. Yeah. That's because crazy. You got to think about it. That when you create magnetic fields, the inside is the Tesla area, right? It's the strongest point known inside of a magnet. When you put multiple magnets around to rotate it, the center of it's your area you get the most Tesla from or the most energy from, right? So it makes sense that there would be like zero in there as it flows, but then because it's tearing through it, it won't allow it to work. You know what I mean? It'll only mm. allow the field itself to propagate it and it builds there. I don't know how best to explain that, but I, I just don't know that there's a whole lot of gravity in that. There's energy everywhere, right? But I don't know there's a lot of gravity in the center of that. Yeah. So that's just my thought. Everybody else can think opposite. Uh, it's okay. They normally do. I get it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Van Allen belt. That's what he, that's, I couldn't remember it. Van Allen belt. That's yeah. Van it. Allen. That's it. If, if you ever pull that up and you see the picture of it, uh, it would look just like what I'm describing here. You see the Van Allen belt with two different separate fields. And then you see the earth itself with zero field. And then you see the inside where it starts to build energy. You start to see, see the energy in it, just like we're talking about here. So, yeah, I've seen Great Scott's channel. I like it. So somebody brought that up right there. Have you ever seen that channel? He talks no, about no, it. I haven't seen it. Yeah, he does circuit building and stuff. That's really cool. I, I enjoy I'll check it channel. out. <laughs> By the way, Gerald and I are going to start a channel on Wednesdays where we're going to start talking about uh, just simple circuits for this stuff. So, you have to build a Tesla coil circuit. You have to build a circuit for your uh, uh, star coil or whatever you're doing. All that has to be built. So we're going to start building them and showing them. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. That'd be pretty cool because some people just want to do it at home and they don't know where to start. So we're, we're going to stay a little away from the theory side of it where it just looks like something that you wouldn't understand and just go solder point to solder point. So if you want to build it, piece of cake. Just follow, you know I mean, follow exactly what we do and we're, you'll be good. So let's see what we got in the comments. Yeah, go to Valhalla. Well, hopefully not soon. That's <laughs> you have to die to go there, I guess. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, you want to polarize your static field? It's going to get polarized no matter what you do. So one of the things I'll remove this. Sorry, that Gerald was talking about is he can change the north and the south. Just by the way he changes the direction of his coil in the center of that big coil. You know what I mean? He can change which <coughs> side north, which side south. So when I talk about the directionality in this, that's what's telling you right there. It tells you which direction you're going. You know what I mean? And which way it's flowing. So a lot of people don't understand Tesla coil is pretty weak when it comes to the bottom of it. I don't know if you ever noticed the circuits are always on the bottom of it and they're not affected. But a Tesla coil field goes out, right? So when I show you that shape that goes like this, it'll start to make sense to you. Why do you have it at the top where you start to get the field? Well, because that's where your breakout point is. You're interrupting no field with the field. You know what I mean? So it kind of tells you it flows around just like that. So it's kind of interesting when you get into each part of it. That's why I built every single part. You can see behind me, I got Tesla coils. Well, excuse me, this side. There's some over here on this side. I built a lot of them. So, was, maybe you can help me out with um the name of the uh, propulsion system i'm thinking of but it's like um it, 
some some kind of like hy hydrodynamic um magnetic propulsion system that works off of that same exact concept you know of um you know uh, opposing uh toroidal forces talk about stan meyer's work or is it something okay. different I don't know, they were using different things more similar to what I was talking about the first time around with like um, it, it worked off of um, creating fields uh, and and torque with, um, with with different electrolytes and and liquid metals um, you know and it was contained the coils uh, it was it, there was coil fields that were um, basically emanating into um so like round uh cylinders you know and then the flow was created you know in the solution you know in each of these cylinders and then separated and placed on either side of each other counter rotating creating the torque i i'll have to i'll i'll research it a, um Is a little bit right here um it's, it's not I mean, I, what what the fluid was was technically a ferrofluid, um, but it wasn't called that. Um, so yeah, in fact, I mean, I know that that particular uh, you know video had referenced uh, like a like a mercury drive type engine. It's not, and definitely not a thunderstorm generator, although it works off of um, the same types of principles with counter rotating vortices. You know that. Um, uh, the, you know, it works like um, a, a dual torus would, where it's, you know, coming in one side, coming out the other twice, and then exchanging, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what was creating the um, the torque of it. But there was various issues with it. I'm going to research it, and I'll shoot you a DM on the side, you know, another time. Huh. Um, but it's yeah. super If you super bring it up, it, we, we could take a look at it and just do a show on it, because I've never seen it, and I'd love to. Yeah, I know I could find that video easy enough, and it was like a lengthy and very explanatory. You know, they explained the whole nine yards with it. You know, um, but there was issues with with that system. Uh, you know that they were explaining too. It was a long time ago, but it, that definitely came to mind. You know, with um with the field generation and all that sort of stuff. It's super interesting. Um, yeah, well, it sounds like it. 